We're back. Uh, drug courts have been used as an alternative to the criminal justice system for nonviolent offenders since 1989, but supporters say we need more of them. Earlier, I spoke with actor Martin Sheen, a big advocate for drug courts. Along You're here testifying on the judge uh, on the drug court issue. Mr. Sheen has been a vocal supporter of drug courts for several years around the country and here in Congress. And we're Mr. Doing... Sheen stands up for what he believes in, and fortunately for us. He believes in drug courts. Well, you know, I've been a supporter of drug court for nearly 20 years. I have come here today to support you, to encourage you, and to congratulate you on the most realistic, the most innovative, and the most productive program to emerge from the justice system regarding drug and alcohol abuse in our nation's history. I come to uh, my support of, of drug court uh, through my work uh, uh, of, of, with social justice. My first exposure to drug court began nearly 20 years ago and opened my eyes to the incredible capacity of human beings to change. The miraculous recovery of people that before drug court were just thrown away and added to an already overcrowded and tragic uh, prison population. Now, drug courts provide hope and strength and support to those the traditional justice system says are hopeless. You have focused on recovery, not retribution, and the results have been extraordinary and dramatic. Our criminal justice system has been transformed over the last two decades by dedicated drug court professionals. With such an inspiring, committed, courageous, and resourceful, and heroic gathering of drug court professionals. You are the pioneers of a new justice system. In fact, we are getting more bipartisan support than we have in the past 22 years. And each and every one of you have responded to that mysterious yearning which has led you to serve, but your service is far more than what you do for a living. It is what you do to stay alive. Because in drug court, we all know that when one person rises out of drugs and crime, we all rise to that. Now you're talking about courage. Now you're talking about change. Now you're talking about possibility. Now you're talking about drug court. And in the end, we are made worthy of the long-promised blessings reserved for those who do justice and show mercy. And I want you to know personally that I am committed wholeheartedly in any way I can to supporting your organization. Keep going forward. There's enough people following you, and history is going to be the judge of what you did. Again, I congratulate you for what you are doing. Stick to it like a stamp, and remember, fear is useless. Faith is necessary. Love is everything. Thank you. Induction into the Stanley Goldstein Hall of Fame is the highest honor bestowed by NADCP. As all of you have seen, Martin Sheen has been our most public champion and advocate for over two decades. And there simply is no, no better person I can think of for induction today. Martin, thank you for your belief in the capacity of human beings to change. And thank you for teaching us all that no individual is beyond hope. Martin, thank you for bringing humility, integrity, kindness, and grace to the set of the West Wing every single day. And thank you for helping us all be more than just co-workers. Thank you for making us a family. Martin. Thank you for leading by example and showing us how to live lives of service. You are not only eloquent with your words, but you are a man of action. You taught us to put our heart into things we believe in, to fight for them and to do it with love. You, Martin, are a living example of the scripture, love thy neighbor. You are an inspiration to me, and not just because you taught me the coolest handshake ever, but I love you from the bottom of my heart. You mean the world to me. Martin uh, said it. Love is everything. Uh, I was once uh, talking to a bunch of students, and I'm going to brag, it was at Oxford. Um, and Martin Sheen was coming soon after to, uh, to speak to the same students. And we had been talking about religion and, and every kind of thing. And they said, well, Martin Sheen is coming. Uh, what, what can you tell us? What, what is he really like? And since we had been talking about religion, I, 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 I said, to them that if Jesus were alive today, he would point to Martin Sheen and say the following. That's what I was talking about. <clears throat> Martin, you stand up for
for the people in the depths of despair, the unjustly treated, the addicted, when much of society has written them off. And you elevate us all by doing just that. Thank you. Martin, thank you for finding the dignity and beauty in every human being and inspiring all of us to do the same. I love you from my heart. Martin, thank you for leading all of us and teaching us how to be kind and good to each other. You not only created our West Wing family, you lifted up and have been an integral part of the treatment court family. You've, you've been with us from the beginning and you've walked with us from the beginning and many of the pioneers that you've walked with side by side are, are in this room today. On behalf of thousands of grateful treatment court professionals and the millions of people who your advocacy has helped save, we could not be more honored to induct you into the Stanley Goldstein Hall of Fame. Thank you, so, thank you so very much, all of you. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves treating a grown man like this. <sighs> My God, I thought I was just going to walk on and off, but I do have a, a few impromptu remarks. <laughs> I want to thank the National Association of Drug Court Professionals for this very special honor, and I want to express my admiration and my support for drug court and the many thousands of drug court participants across our country, including all of you heroic prosecutors, uh, probation officers, public defenders, police officers, health care providers, lawyers, and judges who work together day in and day out to restore lives and to restore hope in the never-ending substance abuse war, despite the casualties, the setbacks, and the scars of battle. The Irish tell a story of a man who arrives at the gates of heaven and asks to be let in. St. Peter says, of course, just show us your scars. The man says, I have no scars. St. Peter says, what a pity. Was there nothing worth fighting for? Your scars are earned with your daily bread, and you are the embodiment of Robert Kennedy's declaration that one heart with courage is a majority. And such courage lifts up our nation and all our people to that place where the heart is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, dear Father, let us all awake. Thank you so much.